Mr. Crispin here once again and uh, today I'm going to be doing some thin wall turning. Uh, I've nearly finished the cylinder blocks and um, you'll see the final cylinder machining video coming out soon but uh, I fancy doing some turning today and so I'm going to make the decorative end covers for the cylinder caps. So um, without further ado I'll show you a drawing. Here is uh, today's component and uh, what this drawing shows is basically a decorative end cover to fit on the outside of these uh, cylinder covers uh, and uh, you'll see how that all fits at the end. I'm going to make uh, two of these out of aluminium and I've put some rough dimensions on there to give you uh, an idea so it's about 2.4 in diameter and uh, wall thickness of about 60 thou which is a mil and a half. Um, Rather than give a lengthy explanation on how I'm going to do it all, I'll just go ahead and uh, show you all the operations and you can follow along. And uh, at the end we should have a couple of finished components. So uh, I'm going to do this in three ops. Uh, and I'm going to start at the lathe and uh, make a couple of discs uh, slightly over width and big on the diameter. So off camera I have uh, parted and faced two discs, faced off side, parted side and having cleaned everything I'm going to load this back in the three jaw chuck the other way around now uh, with the parted side towards the camera uh, and I'm now going to do the internal work on the back that I showed earlier. Okay and uh, when that's done it should look something like this. Um, you see the little boss inside? and then the dished inside. Um, the OD of course is uh, much oversized at the moment. Now to do this um, I could use a boring bar or something but what I've actually done is I've ground a trepanning tool uh, which is a, effectively a face grooving tool so you might be able to see it there. Flat on the end, small radius each side of the tool and um, an angle or a radius ground here to allow me to plunge straight into the face and I'm going to show this uh, now. First up though I'm just going to face this off and take the stock down to thickness. This should be the uh, finish facing cut now. Panning wise I don't think you'll be able to see the actual end of the tool but you'll be able to see what it's doing. Uh, so here goes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to touch on to the component and zero my dial for a longitudinal travel that is. Now to actually remove this metal I'm going to take a series of plunge cuts along the um, radius down to nearly full depth. Uh, I can't plunge in too near to the middle though because of the angle ground on the tool. Just to uh, illustrate my point, if I have a diameter like this and a tool like this, that's fine, it'll cut nicely. But if I try and cut too close to the centre with a trepanning motion, uh, I'm going to actually have an interference here and the bottom of the tool will start rubbing. You could uh, solve this by grinding a steeper angle on the tool, but then you get a less and less rigid tool.
using a paraffin as a lubricant here by the way Layer the swarf. I'm going in a, a quarter inch deep here. And I believe this is technically known as trepanning. otherwise known as uh, face grooving either way um, seems to be working okay here so that's my first groove if you can see that now I'm just going to come out the width of the tool and uh, trip on the next groove This is going to be the uh, last pass on the OD for now. I'm going to uh, concentrate my efforts on the inside. But uh, I've only got a few thousand to come off on the OD and all the um, back face is pretty well near size. Just the centre boss to look at. I am now just uh, turning this boss down to depth using the uh, trepanning tool just as a facing tool. Nearly there. And that should be that. Now then, all that is left is to take this diameter of the boss to the final size and then uh, I'll just skim across here I can uh, think about a finishing cut now So to finish off I'm going to feed uh, down the side of the boss, out across the face and back out of here. There we are, a nice um, fit and uh, nice and flush.
Okay, that uh, concludes that. So I will now set up for the third and final op and uh, show you that. So uh, now just to take this down to diameter and uh, round the corners off, um, I've turned this little boss here and uh, there's a few things I could do from this point. I could use a super glue or Loctite and uh, stick that on here and then uh, finish it. But because I've got two of them to do, I'm actually going to use the pressure turning method. So with that uh, just placed on there, I've got this slug of brass which, which is faced off and I've put a centre hole in the end. And I'm just going to use the tailstock to apply an amount of pressure on there while it rotates and uh, that should hold it uh, rigid enough for me to just skim the OD down to size and put a radius on this corner. So I will do that on camera now. Okay, so that's all running nicely and uh, what I did there was to just back the tailstock off and re-engage it while it was running so it finds its true position. Also, I've put a piece of paper in there um, and uh, that improves the grip slightly I think. But, but the main reason it's there is if this were to stop spinning it would start galling on the face of the uh, aluminium but with the paper it would just skid nicely. So I can now proceed to machine this down to diameter. So that's that, I've turned it down to size and I've put a radius on using a form tool. I can now um, get rid of all this and uh, I'm just going to leave it on there and uh, polish it with some uh, wire wool. Just deburring this hole. And uh, then I'm going to continue to polish this, I'm using uh, wire wool with water as a lubricant. Well you can go on polishing forever but I'm going to leave it at this for now. That is the um, caps done, both of them, and they fit on the cylinder block like that. And uh, the front of the engine would be um, around here somewhere so uh, that is the purpose of them, purely decorative and they're held on with a little 8BA screw through there into the tapped hole. You'll see all this work by the way in the next uh, cylinder machining video. Um, that's about it for today. Uh, as for the method, uh, you could also have done this using soft jaws. I don't have any but if you did you could quite easily turn all this um, in the first stop, drill your hole, um, same on the other one, then bore the soft jaws and do everything uh, around here. Um, all I will say about the pressure turning method is that you could probably get away with doing something even thinner. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in the pressure turning method, uh, have a look at Joe Pyzinski's video called Machining Ultra Thin Washers and Spacers, and that's where I got the idea for um, this method. Um, as I said at the beginning, they're about 60 thou. I've got one of these things here to show you. So yeah, about 60 thou on the... Um, on the uh, face and the side wall also about 60 thousand. So uh, that's it for today I hope you've enjoyed watching and see you on the next video